Hi, my name is Derek Wickramanayaka. Welcome to my Rig Rundown. As a child, many people, they have their dreams. Sometimes the parents put their dreams. You know what I mean? Give them what they want to become. As for me, I only want to, to, to do play music, play in a band. I want to play the guitar. I want to sing. I want to be on stage. And this is what, it's just a passion I had. And I, and I knew I'm going to do that. I was very bad with my studies in school because I was more concentrating on, on uh, you know, music and listening to songs and humming tunes all the time. And so when I was about 16, I got a break with a band called Hazen Ice Cream Candy. And they offered me to play bass. And they, there's a guy called Sharon Pritchard, who was a band leader. He, he um, told me how to play bass. I had no clue. I didn't know how to play bass. I knew some chords on the guitar, but that's it. So I took the bass guitar and I started practicing and I think I played pretty well as a bass, for a bass player. For about a year, we played together in Candy. Then they left to, went to Australia. Then I uh, was looking for work. That's when I met Jeffrey Fernando, uh, Curtis Monhart, my friends. We found a band for a while, but we didn't have enough work. We were just, you know, struggling to... to it was a good band, but to, to get things going. Then in, in 74, I got a break to go to Afghanistan to play at the Intercontinental as a bass player. But about a week before we were to, we were to fly, they told me the whole bass player is coming back and I have to play the guitar. I said, okay, I'll play. But I couldn't play the guitar. So anyway, I went to Afghanistan and I started practicing. I had uh, good les get, uh, guitar lessons from a guy called Herschel Rodrigo. He was a keyboard player. He taught me to play a lot of stuff. And uh, also another friend from the Philippines. His name is Mike Hilario. He showed me how to play rock. You know, he was very good at that. And that's how it started for me. And then from there, I, was, I, I, I traveled to Europe. Went to Europe for about two, I think four years. Then we came back to Sri Lanka in 79 and formed a band called Rendezvous with Manilal. Pereira, Jeffrey Fernando, Michael De Silva, Paulo Diasi, a few other guys. It is a good band, crazy band, nice, a lot of fun. And then in 1980, we got a break to go to Switzerland. That's when uh, all the fun disappeared. Because when we went to Switzerland, it was a case of practicing all the popular songs and playing them. You couldn't play what you like to play. You have to play what the people like to listen to, dance to. It was for 20 years we did that and then I came back to Sri Lanka from Wildfire. And that was the best. Thing that happened to me because we played just what we wanted to play and we we didn't follow any rules we just had two guitars bass and drums we just did the best with our instruments and that that pulled us through you know and then that broke up and then i tried different bands different wildfires that didn't work out so finally i i stopped playing but i'm <laughs> i am I'm, I'm studying jazz now i'm i want to be a good jazz guitarist so a lot of work to be a jazz guitarist it's not just playing songs and solos. You got to learn chord work, you got to learn melodies, you got to learn, learn jazz standards. There's so much of time you need to spend to play jazz. So since I have a lot of time in my hands, I, I can do that. My influences, well, at the beginning it was like all the pop bands, like the Beatles. Well, what really inspired me was Santana and that movie Woodstock. And there were some great guitar players in that, in that, in that movie. Uh, in the concert, uh, like 10 years after Elvin Lee, Jimi Hendrix, and so many bands. And, uh, and also the, the, the music that, that they played in Wood Woodstock, this band called Cross Pussies Nash & Young, they were really good with the harmony, vocal harmonies. And I wanted to be like that. I want to be a hippie guy playing guitar, you know, playing rock and stuff like that. But uh, like I said earlier, when you when you want to play a certain genre of music, you have to have the technique. Just be in you. Like to be a rocker, you can't, you have to be a rocker to play rock guitar. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You have to have that aggressive personality. So now I'm not a rocker anymore because I don't have that aggressive personality anymore. I'm more very chilled out, calm guy and jazz suits me. It's very, very um, relaxing. Well, since I'm practicing to play jazz, I love the art of playing jazz. It's something new for me. This is not really new, but it, I, I have played jazz standards since I started playing with the, you know, with the Squire set and all these bands. But uh, only now I, I, I am getting 
the main the idea of how to play jazz you know it's, it's not it's not just uh, playing scales and arpeggios and stuff it's just you got to create melodies and then use them at the right time and it's it's very it's a creative process you know so i need to find a band maybe a two three piece three piece band with bass and drums guitar bass and drums band form a band or something like that but i'm still not ready for it so once i'm ready that's what i want to do okay guys uh, it's time to show you my rig there's not much here uh, this is what i use for my for my acoustic guitar this is my tracelin amplifier stress acoustic and this is my um, tech 21 acoustic pedal this has delay reverb amplifier and some boost and compressor whatever level so um, that's it for the acoustic guitar let me play something and show you yeah and uh, this is my guitar that i'm using for my acoustic work this has two pickups this is a fishman and this is a bridge pickup i don't know what it's called but uh, and i have sort of modified this with uh, with some with a fishman pickup this is an old uh, yamaha f what's this 370 i got this as a gift from a friend of mine and i love this guitar i like the action i like the fretboard it's really nice comfortable to play i don't use much for when i'm playing acoustic i just have a little reverb and delay and maybe with a boost to play solos so this is how it sounds Now I like to show you my jazz uh, setup for my jazz gigs. Uh, this is a Epiphone, some kind of jazz guitar, and I use flat bound strings and uh, and I use this amplifier. This is an Orange Crush, uh, 50 watts. I had it for about six years now. This is pretty much much the base, basic basic uh, amplifier with two different controls. It has a clean sound and it has a good. I don't use any pedals for this because it it has to have sort of a very dry sound, clean sound. You don't use many effects for for the stuff I want to play. I like to keep it that way. Now we'll go to my uh, Telecaster. This is what I used to play with the band Wildfire. This is a good guitar for commercial work and it has a very nice clean sound. I normally use it directly into the mixer, but today I want to show you how I use it with the amplifier. When you use it the amplifier it has a lot more highs. That's why it plays sound very very sharp. Yeah, this is a clean sound with a bit of delay. Then. This also has good distortion sound. Let's see how it sounds here. Now we come to uh, my other guitar. This is a PRS Carlos Santana model, 25 years. Uh, my God, something to it. <laughs> 25 years, I know. A signature model, something like that. It's, I uh, exchanged this with a, with a friend of mine. I had a Gibson Les Paul, which was too heavy for me to play around with, and uh, he wanted the guitar, so he gave me this, and I gave him my P, uh, my Les Paul, Gibson Les Paul, and um, I use this a lot, and I also tune it, uh, detune it. I, I'm on E flat tuning. Is E flat? Yeah, this is a Carlos Santana's guitar too. So I always love to play Santana songs, and this has a really nice sound for the songs I want to play. Let me show you something that I love playing of Carlos Santana's. <laughs> Thank you. 
Finally, I like to show you the instrument that broke wildfire up. <laughs> Going back 2003, four, I guess. Yeah, this is the mandolin I used to play. I took this instrument to play every night, just to play two two songs. One was "Rules in My Religion" and the other song, which I made up on the spot and it became very popular among the the audience. So I'll just play a little bit of that. By the way, you must notice that I don't have strings here. These strings are all broken. I don't know how, but somehow it broke. I just have um, just uh, two sets here and another string. I think I can still play the song. This is a uh, Ibanez. Uh, I bought it at a cash converter in Australia for about 15 pounds, 15 dollars. Sorry, 15 dollars. Uh, it's a very old, old model guitar. It's, it's really nice, though. Uh, mandolin, sorry. Yeah, it's. it's yeah, yeah, I like this instrument. Okay, guys, that's my rig rundown. Although I have these pedals which I showed you earlier. Actually, it's not necessary to have these pedals or to buy better pedals or fancy pedals unless you're playing you know, for a big multi-million dollar gig or something. A, a, a normal pedal with reverb, delay, chorus, compressor, yeah, that's okay to have when you can color your sound. Everybody likes to have a nice sound. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You can get good pedals, cheap, not so expensive, but and also try to minimize what you're carrying with you like uh, with the amplifiers and pedals and stuff don't take a lot of stuff and you know try to uh, play because you know, the playing comes from your hand if you have a, a small pedal or big pedal it's still how you play that's coming out so be careful don't go and spend too much money buying fancy stuff that's my advice you guys hopefully my i can get this jazz band up and running soon and uh, please come and talk to me and we'll exchange some musical ideas about equipment, uh, whatever you want to know.